Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to, I think, the fourth of uh, this series uh, featuring Alexander Vaprinsky on uh, composer, Jewish composers of opera, operetta, and Broadway. And uh, I think we all learned so much from, uh, from you in the last few weeks and looking forward to this one. Um, but before we go into it, just wave back to me if you can hear me okay. Perfect. Thank you so much and ready to go. Uh, Alexander, you're bringing back to me my childhood memories because um, operetta is something uh, very close to my heart and to my, my upbringing. My grandparents uh, sang these operetta hits. Uh, day and night at home, all these arias from the operettas, and that's how I was raised. So I'm very, very happy about the subject that you are speaking tonight. And, and I, I hope, I really hope that everyone else, and not that I hope, I actually am sure that everyone will enjoy because the music uh, written by uh, Emerich or in Hungarian Imre Kalman, uh, it is absolutely spectacular. Spectacular, um, and uh, and looking forward to hear more from you. So, with no further ado, Alexander. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to. Uh, you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, I would like to uh, to join uh, Tibi to saying that this is this is close to me as well because not only because this is in Europe. They all sang this. They, uh, we all sang the actual melodies from Kalman's Car operetta. It's very popular. And now I would like to introduce it, them to you. And not only that, I work in, uh, was working in a music theater, as you know, and I, I conducted many of those operettas as well, among the others. Okay, so I know them very much, and I, I love them very much. So it's a very very exciting evening. So now. We are uh, talking about Imre Kalman, who was a Hungarian composer of operettas and a prominent figure in the development of Yeni's operetta in the 20th century. If you remember last time we talked about Jacques Offenbach, who was the, 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 uh, the father of this operetta. And obviously Kalman continued to uh, this step, but Kalman as well as Lihar was the leading composer of what has been called the Silver Age of Guinea's operetta during the first quarter of the 20th century. Uh, people called him a king of operetta and even an emperor of Vienna. Shostakovich called him a genius, but friends called him a sullen bear. Sullen bear, melancholic, and pessimist, modest person who basically didn't know how to have fun. Kalman, nevertheless, created almost 20 operettas fulfilled with joy, life, love, humor, and triumph of justice. Kalman developed Viennese operetta from genre of uh, in, uh, entertainment, entertainment into genre fulfilled with realism and psychological depth and added chardash. This is the Hungarian dance, Hungarian gypsy dance, chardash, and in his later years, American jazz to his operatus. Emmerich Kopstein, that was his name at birth, was born in the small village Shifok near the lake uh, Peloton. Yes, I, I've been uh, many times in Shiofok. It's a beautiful little city um, and uh, they are very, very proud for having Kalman as one of their, uh, their honorary citizens. He, uh, yes, thank you. And he showed his early musical talents in, uh, but he wanted to be, first he wanted to be a tailor when he was a child, then later a lawyer. He attended though music school as well. Gradually, he started to, uh, to love music and studied it very thoroughly. In 1896, family moved to Budapest. 
Kalman was helping fi family by teaching music, by tutoring. Okay, so the so family obviously was in, a, in a, some financial needs. In 1898, Kalman gave his first public piano recital under the new name, Imre Kalman, and since there he kept this name. The boy was so small and slim that papers next day praised the performance of 12 year old wonder, uh, wonder kid, kid. He was 16, by, by the way, already. That time he was 16, so they praised. Soon Kalman was forced to stop his piano career because of early onset of arthritis. Besides, his parents wanted him to become a lawyer. What else in, in a Jewish family, you know, you, you expect? Lawyer, doctor, that's big, very popular. Kalman's father insisted that Kalman had to study law at university. But after a, a year, his secret year in the university, he secretly uh, from father entered the least, least music academy in Budapest. He decided to become a composer and a serious composer. Father, when he just learned about this, was strongly against it. So Imre had to break up with his family. To make a living, Kalman tries to compose music for cabarets for the, uh, and different songs. Uh, he's uh, successful, he was successful, a kind of successful debut came at his uh, graduation concert when he graduated this uh, music academy. That was a symphonic poem, Saturnalia, and some songs. And Kalman tried to publish them in Germany. He go, uh, goes to Germany, tries, but every publishing company denied it, his request. Kalman was so upset that his serious music wasn't in need. Absolutely. But his light mu uh, song music, uh, like songs created, were pretty popular. He pushed away the idea of writing this in such a light genre, uh, genre as operetta. I'm a serious composer, he said. He, he explained, I'm a serious composer. But, you know, he needed, uh, he needed to make a living. So Kalman, uh, under the pressure of his friends, also writes his first operetta, which called Autumn Maneuvers, or in America it went by, by the uh, name of Gay Hussars in 1908. It was a smashing success. Next day, the whole city, the whole Budapest, sang the melodies from the operetta. It was staged all around the Europe, which prompted the composer to move to Vienna. I would like to share with you this, the first uh, excerpt what I have. This uh, share the, uh, the overture from this operetta. Okay, would you please give me the host uh, rights to share? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. There you go. Thank you. So that's the first, I'm so, sorry, that's once again, once again, let's try again. So one, two, and two, and three. So I would like to share this, uh, the uh, overture to this operetta, just excerpt, because it's a lot of uh, here, okay? Listen to this. First, you will hear this kind of close, uh, closeness with the, um, with his the operetta, the Viennese operetta. And then I put you to the end of this and you will hear the childish. That's where this comes his style. <laughs> Thank you. 
horses are just, you know, then they, 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 they force them. Yeah, this is the And the cannons are. Okay, so time is gone. It's a beautiful, but I have to show you this one, okay? Let's do this. This is childish. You see, so that's the rhythms, rhythms of Chardash. The rhythms of Chardash, if you, you hear the syncopation, say, I would like to, to mention here, you will hear this a lot of Chardashes tonight, but uh, Chardashes, but I would like to mention that, however, this only this operetta was in, in uh, I think in Hungarian original. And the language, when he moved, and he moved in, in 1908, he moved to Vienna, 1909. He moved to Vienna and all his operettas uh, were staged in German. But the music mm -hmm. was exactly this was hun Hungarian flavor. Let's say Hungarian flavor, how they understood this Hungarian flavor. That's it comes from Gypsy. Uh, we talked about this, you know, when, when you have this, this, this kind of shift, you may hear some, some maybe Jewish, uh, you know, intonations in this. Motives, but, yeah. Yes. So motifs, so you can hear, and with the rhythm of Chardash. Since but there's, 19... a little, there's a little controversy about Chardash, is that right? Uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. The controversy. If I if I go into this, so this yes, there's the 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 uh, you know Hungarian composer Bartok. You will give me five five other minutes, okay? Five I'll minutes. give you ten more minutes. No, when it's Kalman, just... you could speak so, the so whole night. I'll listen the Hungarian to the composer, another great Hungarian composer of the 20th century, Bartok, together with another Hungarian composer and this ethnographist uh, Zoltan Kode, they discovered and they they went to the uh, Hungarian villages to to record as those uh, Hungarian melodies, not only Hungarian but the the Western, uh, you know, somewhere, some Slavic, different Slavic melodies. So they oh, discovered, yeah. yes, yes, and different Romanian, Hungarian, and all this stuff, this region, Carpathian region. And they discovered that this actually what the least, or or let's say Brahms called the Hungarian. It's not Hungarian, it's it's gypsy. It's real in reality, it's more gypsy music, which was obviously adopted. Uh, into into the Hungarian music, but real Hungarian music, it's not that it, it different. So so we will not go about this. If you want about Bartok, I can I can tell you about Bartok, but not today. Okay. So Bartok is in a, a different time, but still we uh, it considers just very very Hungarian music. Since 1909, uh, Kalman's life has been associated with Vienna. Eventually, he settled there for many years. Imre worked very hard that time. One operetta by another comes under his, uh, his pen, which uh, uh, marched around the world so successfully that even this World War I could not stop them. The melodies from, for example, the, Ch uh, the Chardash Princess written in 1915, the operetta that brought its uh, author truly worldwide fame. They, these melodies were sung on both sides of the front. Can you imagine? That's the war, in midst of the war. So they sing in Germany, in Austria, and they sing in Russia. So, and they, you know, they, they, they fought. 
but the melodies, they, they obviously differ, uh, they differ the, the text something, but the melodies, it was so popular, it sang by, so the, like, like music united both sides, okay? I would like to, to uh, really uh, just uh, introduce you to this uh, operetta with two numbers here from Chardash, uh, Chardash Princess, written in 1915. So this is the two numbers called the, the entry area by, uh, by uh, Silva. So Silva is the main heroine and the, uh, yes. And then Duet, Silva and Edwin. That's all about love, about this love and betrayal and love and this. That's all operetta. That's the, the uh, kind of uh, main plot in operetta, okay? So let's look at this. I think it's this one, yes. So this is entering entry area of Silva. <laughs> This is one number and another number. Alexander, can you please repeat what you what you were saying during the video because the music okay. was uh, I, I, too loud. I, I think hear. I did I did a little bit less sound. Okay, so it just what I was saying that in every his number and every number of uh, comments, uh, you know, almost every number uh, is the this is the singing and then dance, singing and dance. Every character in his uh, operatus is dancing. And this is the story behind because he, uh, Kalman himself didn't dance, he didn't 
know how to dance. He didn't uh, didn't want to, to dance. But one time at the ball, at the grand uh, you know grand ball, he was present there, and and the one the pretty woman just just invited him to dance, and he couldn't resist. And what he did, he he went. He went to dance and he tripped and he fell and everybody left. So after this, he decided that every character, and I don't know why with this, but every character uh, in his apparatus will dance. The, it doesn't, doesn't matter this is old or young uh, person will dance. Okay, so that's how it is. One of the central numbers, one of the duets from the operetta, uh, this, the, uh, from the, um, Operetta Charles Princess, Duet Silva and Edmund. Okay, this is concert, obviously. Listen to the beautiful music. And the great operativa, Anna Netrebko. Kammerporen schon vergessen, schon verloren, und ein Gatten nennt dich sein. Andere Menschen, andere Städtchen, andere Liebe, andere Mädchen, und ein Bräutchen wunderfall. Alles Glück, was wir besessen, du setzt leicht in es aufs Spiel. Ich liebte dich so unermessen, ach so viel, ach so viel. So viel, ja, wo denn das Leben schwebt, der bleibt von dir in Ruf Und alles, was wir einst erlebten, war ein Traum, war nur ein Traum. Weißt du es noch? 
singer huh okay anyways so this is the uh, okay so about this I, do you understand this the words anything no so, i don't i mean no, so this, that's this is german yes Valentine. if it would be hungarian and she said and she said yes uh, and she's saying that our our uh, this romance is is over our this affair is over you betrayed me and here is this ha 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 I, I I go and and they painful for both of them, and he's he's singing that you remember how we were in love and and, and just cherished it, etc. So that's that's basically very very dramatic thing. Okay, no, then everything just uh, ends well. Remember this operetta always happy end. That's what here. Okay. So uh, while it's here, I will just uh, give you, this is from Bayadera, but uh, before Bayadera, uh, let, me, let me talk a little bit about this. However, uh, despite his, he become famous, famous around the, the Europe for sure, uh, but his life was very, very difficult that time. Death of his uh, older brother, Bella. Then death of his father. It's same same day. This is the from from ten to twenty. You know, 1910, 1920. Death of his beloved uh, wife, pa uh, Paula. He married in, uh, her, and uh, she was at ten actually ten years. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they married in uh, 1909, and she was ten years uh, uh, older mm -hmm. than him. And she really, uh, she really became her uh, his soulmate. Soulmate. She helped with everything. She made her uh, his life. Okay. She prepared food. She she made everything. She took care of him, and he really loved her. But she just become uh, first. Uh, she she become sick, very sick, and she become when she became sick. So he um, he got uh, other woman uh, actually. Uh, but they had a little affair there for a little. Her name was Agnes Esterhazy, very famous name in, 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 in Hungary. That's right. Uh, Agnes Esterhazy, she was an actress. She didn't want some, you know, serious, serious relationship. But again, uh, even his wife was just, were, uh, just lying, you know, in bed. But, but he had this uh, little affair. And uh, that's it wasn't it wasn't for a long time, but it really affected affected uh, Kalman for the uh, he called yes obviously this Agnes that his muse and she just uh, inspired him but it, it wasn't 
for a long time. In 1921, he wrote the operetta Bayadera. Bayadera, or in US, it called the Yankee Princess, where mm. besides the traditional waltz and chardish, Kalman uses new rhythms like foxtrot and shimmy, shimmy based on the dances of a, a indigenous people. That's what the shimmy, yes. And also he uses Eastern melodies because this is a, it shows the, it portrays the love of Indian Prince Rajamo uh, and the actress Odette. Okay, I would like to show you one Ken Ken. This is Ken Ken, the classical genre of operetta, the classical number in operetta, that's very composer, okay? This is duet, Napoleon and Mariette. And here, Mariette and Napole uh, Napoleon. Napoleon, no, this is not the Napoleon, Napoleon. That's his name, okay? That's uh, two, uh, the <laughs> two main characters. And you will hear now shimmy. What the shimmy dance come, okay? <laughs> Если вы хотите быть современной, вам придется изучить и непременно танцы те, что нам принес 20 век. И прекрасен в этих танцах человек. Кавалер бы вы вполне благородный, и не кажется шикарный и модный. И за то, что вы сумели сердце сразу покорить, я готова вам все танцы подарить. Мадмуазель, станцуем шиме, чтобы не считали нас такими, дико старомодными, смешными. Все подряд! Шиме — это самый модный танец, на щеках у всех зажжет румянец, а придумал шиме сумасшедший говорят. Правильно про это нам сказали, шиме только дико не плясали, Ну а если он смущаясь подходит, вряд ли так себе подругу находит. Только тот сегодня вправе приглашать на танец дам, но без правил и стеснения скажет вам. Ах, под глазой станцуйте вы шиме, чтоб вы не считали нас такими, дико старомодными, смешанными, все Субтитры сделал 
I okay. loved it. I'm just not used to the the Russian. I know it in Hungarian. Okay, so so they are saying. Okay, sorry, but I I, I just I I, I dig. No, I it's, dig it's that amazing, I, 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 and I'm that. sure there's so many other languages this was translated into. Yes, yes. So so shimmy is uh, basically what they sing in this shimmy is a very fashionable dance, and and who uh, this uh, that we wouldn't be you know just uh, uh, old fashioned. So let's dance shimmy. And then the shimmy is just uh, who invented the shimmy invented the some crazy crazy person. So that's how they, they, they did. Okay, so anyways, so this is Bayadera. And eventually in 1924, he wrote his maybe one of the most famous operetta, Countess Maritza. Mm -hmm. Countess Maritza, mm -hmm. the, the main character, Maritza, he just wrote from uh, Agnes Esterhazy. Yes, the actress, his new muse. And this is one, maybe one of the most, I would say, I conducted this many times, and uh, maybe this is one of the most popular and uh, the romantic uh, operettas in his. Okay, so listen, this is few numbers from Maritza. Uh, it comes from the air. Uh, Yes, the overture a little bit. Yes, I think it's a oh, it's Let's see what what is this? I think it's overture. <laughs>
is the overture. Now it comes to famous, uh, uh, famous things here. Okay, so I'll, I have to do this like this and to this. Some of my favorite songs are from this one, that's for sure. Yes, yes, probably because you, you're more familiar. Okay, so here's the famous Kam Sigan. Ah. Kam Sigan. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Auch ich war einst ein feiner Czardasch Kavalier, hab kommandiert Zigeuner gerade so wie. Darf der Bio translate? Hab mir die Süßen gegen singen lassen, die Lokasen springen lassen, gerade so wie. That's the name of the character. Ihr müsst nicht ab so stolz drin sitzen heute beim Wein. Wer weiß, vielleicht wird's morgen anders wieder sein. Vielleicht wird morgen die Zigeuner Friede ganz genau dasselbe Lied anders wird's um. Zigan, komm, Zigan, spiel mir was vor. Komm, Zigan, zeig heut, was du kannst. Komm, komm, und nimm deine Geige und spiel mir was vor. Spiel, bis mein Herz vor Freude tanzt. Gib dir alles, was du willst, wenn du Muscheln spielst, wenn du meine Freude, meine Schmerzen mit mir fühlst. Ja, 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 komm, Zigan, komm, Zigan, spiel mir was vor. Stop this because that will be the, to the okay. So this is his aria, and then we have a very funny duet. No, before duet, it's trio. Very funny trio as well. That's the that's the trio. Uh, Populescu. That's the count Populescu. I'll count. That's that's your uh, Zupan and Maritza. Zupan. Yes. Okay. Jupan. Yes, you say Jupan. Okay, let's listen to this. It's a very funny trio. Bitte, das ist alles nur platonisch. Da bin ich beruhigt. <laughs> Unser Typ ist mehr. Brandes Mädel von der Pusta, heute geht's dir gut. Komm und tanz doch, Ustra, Ustra, das geht ins Blut. So musst du dich drehen und biegen, halt dich es an. Wenn die Schuhe auf Löcher kriegen, was liegt daran? Ha, 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 braunes Mädel von der Pusta, zeig wie man tanzt. Dreh dich Mädel, Usta, Usta, zeig, dass du's kannst. Bewegelt hunderttausend Teufel, folg ich dir gut. Hey, das ist der Rede Paprika im Blut. Ja. Garmeden haut die Rosen, Füße von Gazelle. Braune Burschen, enge Hosen sind zugleich zur Stelle. Tanzen, lass die Fetzen fliegen, brennen heiß wie Feuer. Mädel hat gefangen schon, links und rechts ein Freier. Braunes Mädel von der Pusta, heute geht's dir gut. Komm, tanz doch, Ostra, Ostra, das geht ins Blut. So musst du dich drehen und wegen halt ich es an. Wenn die Show auf Löcher kriegen, was liegt daran? Ha, 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 braunes Mädel von der Pusta, zeig wie man tanzt. Dreh dich Mädel, Ostra, Ostra, zeig, dass du's kannst. Wie mit hunderttausend Teufeln hab dich geglückt. Hey, das ist der 
Just add to that these these were the melodies that that the people sang back in Eastern Europe. Even when I grew up as a kid, as a child, my grandparents, uh, even my parents, sometimes, uh, as people sing today Broadway music at home and uh, the famous Broadway songs, this is the music people were were singing back in Eastern Europe. But that was very interesting because I think you had three different. Uh, nations there on the stage at one there was the what's his name populescu yes and populescu. populescu is romanian and you could see the romanian flag on his chest yep. then Trupan is hungarian i guess oh, and, yes. and and she was i don't know what is she Shupa ukrainian is the, is, the, is, is, is the count I can, I can tell you a lot okay give me some 15 minutes i can tell you this this guy is, uh, you know, is uh, he was the he had a, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, he had a farm. So the farm was was the pigs, a lot of pigs, and <laughs> you know, and and he uh, and Maritza to get rid of his uh, of her, you know, this uh, people who, who wanted to to marry her because she's she's rich. So she said through the paper she she wrote in the paper that she's getting married to uh, Baron. Jupan, that she invented this name in her head that, that the other people just just got lost. And what do you think this this Jupan just read this and he came. He came to uh, said, okay, I marry you. So I marry you. And she said, no, no. And he said, oh, you have pigs and I have pigs. And if we just join our pigs together, that will be a big piggery. That's what duets about. <laughs> okay, it's a huge piggery will be there. Listen big to wow. this famous duet. That's very humorous, you know. Is the duet the one that we sang last year with uh, Kati yep. in the concert? Let's go to Varasdin, yeah? Yep. Oh, that's it. That's the song. Käsi Chocolom, habe ich die Ehre und das auserwählte Vergnügen, Gräfin Maritza. Gräfin Maritza, joi, dann sitze ich bei Morgenbäulen. Bitte schön. Just that I look where they sing. Let's go to Varashtin. 
weiß die schönste Frieh, von der Rezept ist blatten sie. Drum möchte ich dir ich gehen nach Barashti. Wenn meine Leidenschaft in Weißen noch als Gulasch sah und in der Brust als Kind im Schulasch Therophen, komm mit nach Barashti, solange noch die Rosen blühen, dort ist die ganze Welt noch rot, heiß, grün. And the dance. Alexander, let me just add one thing here. The original uh, operetta was written in Hungarian and the song has nothing to do with the city of Varashdin. Varashdin is a fictive city. It doesn't necessarily exist. The song was called Sép Város Kolozsvár, which means what a beautiful city Klausenburg or Kolozsvár is. That's, that's a city in Transylvania where actually I was born. So uh, that's why I chose that song to sing last year in our in our uh, operetta concert, and and how interesting how people had to change sometimes the entire meaning of a song and uh, the libretto uh, for when when they had to translate to German because they really wanted some sometimes when they were too Hungarian or too Jewish they could not um, they could not succeed in West. So they had to somehow hide all these things. And they came up with new words, new lyrics. Yes, thank you. In 1926, he, uh, Kalman writes another great operetta, Circus Princess, and the story behind this. One time, one day, he went, uh, Kalman went to the circus and he saw among the other numbers, he, his attention just, uh, attracted uh, one uh, acrobat who was in mask. He was hiding his face. And then he just uh, told him this acrobat when they, they become acquainted, uh, he told him that he is uh, he not showing his mask because he is from novelty family and he cannot, you know, and, and he likes what he does, but he, he cannot uh, open his face because of the, uh, it's it's not a good job for the novelty, okay? So this is not prestigious one, uh, kind of speaking. So that's was the behind this uh, the plot of the uh, of the circus princess. And I would like to show you uh, to uh, listen to the. It's called it's called aria of Mr. X. It's a very famous and famous in every country in, in Europe, a very, very melodic, but this it's sung by the great, great Estonian singer, uh, Georg Otz. I don't know, uh, you probably don't know him, but he, he was the uh, star of operetta in former Soviet Union. Now, obviously it goes in Russian, but again, he is singing how hard, how hard is it for him to go uh, how, uh, every time to the arena, uh, arena and, and hide his face and this is the fate always be in mask but my god how this actual here this <laughs> actuality of this of this what he's uh, saying is it to be in mask whole life okay and to hide his face not because he uh, he is uh, from noble family but he he was uh let's say um his actually his uncle just uh, sent him away and just left him without anything for living. Uh, 
Honest Labels. Снова туда, где море огней, снова туда, с тоскою моей, светит прожектор, фанфары гремят, публика ждет, будь смелее акробат, со смертью играю, смелый дерзок мой трюк. Все замирает, все смолкает вокруг. Слушая скрипку, дамы в ложах вздохнут, Скажут с улыбкой, а Да, я шут, я циркач, так что уже. Пусть меня так зовут вельможи, Как они от меня далеки, далеки, Никогда не дадут руки. Смычок опущен и мелодия допета. Мой конь, как птица, по кругу мчится. Дождем душистым на манеж летят букеты. Но номер конь не гаснет свет. Лепести на песок Никто не знает Как мой путь одинок Сквозь ночь и ветер Мне идти суждено Нигде не светит Мне родное окно Чужого огня, но где же сердце, что полюбит меня? Живу без ласки, боль свою затая. Всегда быть в маске. Судьба, so what do you think about this music? What a voice, first of all. Yes, Alexander, we can't hear you during the video clip, so well, you I have tried to, to. I tried to translate. I don't know. I what know, but I... we couldn't hear you. We we realize you're okay, trying so, so to. Okay, so he's something. saying he's saying that this my 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 uh, way is lonely, and I always to be in mask. That's my fate. That's my fate. Always be in mask. So I uh, this uh, this is the interesting thing about this operetta he wrote this by uh you know uh again his agnes agnes esther has just encouraged him to uh to write this and really he wrote his dedicated to her but the time when this was preparation very very close to the premiere his wife his first wife died his paula so he uh, went and he stood behind the stage and and it, it was crying so let's say dedicated to one woman and he just said farewell to another one uh, to this at, at the premiere okay because show must go on and that's that's his life 
in, in 1929, uh, 1929 uh, uh, Kalman met young Vera Mak uh, Makinskaya. That's, she was the Russian Jewish immigrant and they uh, very soon they married. He was 47, she was 22. And he dedicated his operetta, uh, which uh, Violet, Violet of Montmartre, he dedicated to her. He wrote this in 1930. He dedicated to the, his uh, new wife, Vera. Okay, so the Russian Jewish. I would like this to listen to the one number, wonderful number. It's called Ninon Song. Ninon Song. But this would be a kind of a dance. This is a dance, not the song, but here the dance of this. Okay, so listen. <laughs> one of the of the most uh, important numbers in this so this uh, violet on Montmartre is the uh, dedicated to this bohemian life just uh, two or three people this uh, living under the roofs of Montmartre one of the roof uh, that's another name of the separata and they are uh, one is artist one is poet and the singer like uh, Ninon here and they live and they uh, they try to project themselves, promote themselves, etc. So that's about Bohemian life. And obviously that's uh, the main character of Ninon. He wrote from, from this uh, Vera. Vera, uh, by the way, she was a young uh, actress. And actually, uh, actually she helped him a lot. Uh, in 1938, the Austria 
was annexed, as you know, this Anschluss by Germany. And Kalman, despite of his Jewish origin, was one of Hitler's favorite composers. That's fact. And Kalman was uh, called to the Reich's, Reich's canc uh, counselor to the, uh, you know, and they proposed him to be a uh, honorable Aryan, a real honorable, but he refused. He said, I'm just Hungarian and I don't want, uh, I don't want to be, I don't need this. So he obviously, he needed, uh, he, he knew what he said. And he, once he, he, uh, he came home, he immediately took his family and they, they, uh, Flew, uh, they they uh, flee to the uh, to uh, Switzerland and then to Paris and when they, they Hitler, uh, the, the Germans came to Paris uh, close to Paris they they uh, were compelled to go to United States in 1940 they came to United States uh, <clears throat> obviously the Commons operators were uh, bent through the whole uh, uh, to the whole Europe obviously at uh, that time. In, and uh, but in America, very few people knew his music, and that was uh, you know they 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 weren't uh, interested in this music. So uh, Kalman, uh, this uh, he started to touring with uh, and promoting his music, and then uh, started across across America playing his music. So forgotten melodies became popular again. Some melodies, but he can uh, write after a long break. Kalman writes. So the last operetta, remember this 1930, that's his uh, last operetta was written. Actually, he wrote most of his famous operettas from 20s to 30s, uh, 30. And this, uh, the musical comedy Marinka comes in 1945. Kalman followed all the views from Hungary. And when he learned that both his, his sisters died in a concentration camp, Kalman suffered a heart attack. In 1948, Kalman and family returned to Europe and settled in Paris. Despite his serious health conditions, Kalman continued to work till the last day. He wrote the closing note of his last operetta, Lady of Arizona, the day before his death on October 30th, 1953. So that's, that was the, uh, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> But he worked to the uh, to the end, and obviously, Lady of Arizona. It's a it's a, a tribute to him being in America, and uh, you know he uses this uh, jazz jazz melodies and uh, jazz, uh, jazzy uh, rhythms. Um, he left a rich art uh, artistic heritage. His style main traits traits are bright melodies, bright orchestration. He said. Kalman said that always studied on the works of Tchaikovsky, his main idol. Kalman wrote a few works in different genres. No other genres, you know this, but, but most important genre in his uh, music is operetta. He uh, bequested to be buried in Vienna. That was, was granted and he is buried and I was this, and that, and on that cemetery and you know this, it's very close to uh, to this trio, this the, the, the uh, you know Johann Strauss and and Beethoven and uh, uh, yes, so that's that's the life of this. And I, I will be happy if you if you um just discover something new for you and uh, at, at least will be interested in in Kalman, Kalman's music because it's very bright. It's just I give you just very. I would say small <laughs> for this, okay, small. Uh, Alexander, um, thank you so much for this really, really wonderful lecture. I just wanted to add, I, I realize how hard this is on you because uh, back in Eastern Europe, as I said, this was the popular music for many of us. And um, it is almost like uh, doing an Israeli music concert and all I have is 10 songs to sing. And I have a list of 2,495 songs that I could choose from. And it's gonna be very, very hard. The same thing with Kalman. Every, every piece of music that he, he put on paper, almost every piece of music ended up being 
a hit and um and uh, your songs were were gr really well chosen i i really enjoy them uh but i have to let you know that uh there's so many other of my favorites i missed tonight so i have to go on youtube after this lecture and look them up i don't know if if, if these operettas exist in english or are they recorded on youtube i hope they are and i hope you will do some research you know, I, I asked you, ask you in the previous lectures, uh, tell me, are there any Jewish motifs of these Jewish composers in their music? Can you point them out to us? Well, I, did, I think I did hear some Jewish motifs here, by mistake, probably. I mean, his upbringing wasn't necessarily a, a traditional Jewish upbringing, but, you know, they sounded like Eastern European uh, Yiddish songs, some of them, the folk songs. And some of it uh, sounded, you know, some of the minor uh, scale. Uh, yeah, he alternates them. It does. Yeah. It, it, it it has some neshama in it, you know. Um, because of the, you know, this all the people that they connected, especially you know this in folk music. When you see it, when you hear, for example, the, this this music from the, this region of Carpathian region near Carpathian region. You would hear the, the Jewish intonation for sure. Why? I don't know. I don't go in this area because, it, you know, the people and Jewish people, you know, and gypsy people, they all just migra migrated here and there, migrated and migrated and migrated. And that's why br uh, bringing in, in into culture, just making this rich, a richer uh, culture. Okay, so uh, I'm just, uh, I really uh, proud. I would like to emphasize that Lihar and Kalman, they, they were almost, they, uh, peer, they not peers, but they lived at the same, same time, approximately. And Lihar was the Hitler's as well. He, he was the, uh, his uh, favorite composer as well. And he agreed to, to be an uh, honorable uh, Aryan and he was uh, in, in, in a good honor in that's Nazi Germany. So that's- Lehar, Le, on the other hand, Lehar wasn't Jewish. Yes, he wasn't Jewish, but still, yeah. you know, uh, there are people, and I know the big composers who refuse to be, to, to collaborate with the- uh, Well, of course, the regime. of course. And they, obviously they, they, they flee to, to United States, to, to other countries that were, okay? Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much. That was uh, really a wonderful lecture about someone that we, we should know more and we should listen more to his music. Um, a virtual applause to Alexander for this and Musica Betikva for bringing the virtual series. Virtual applause, that's nice. Virtual <laughs> applause, that's virtual right. Applause. Soon, soon, oh Bezrat Hashem. You know, today, today we, it, it's a sad anniversary. It's one year since this pandemic started. But uh, let's hope that very, very soon we'll be able to gather again safely uh, and, and do lectures and do music and concerts and even dance like all Lehar's uh, um, characters in his operettas. Um, Alexander, next week, uh, yes. are you up again? Yes, another, well, not as well known as uh, Le as. Uh, Salman, or maybe Salman, I just I, I try to to bring it to to make it, make them uh, known. But the other composer, it's it's really you 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 know a lot. That's, that's the, right. uh, Leonard Ber Bernstein. Leonard Bernstein next week. Okay, um, so that will be next week. And and uh, when you said uh, maybe may I, uh, have a joke, maybe this is a bad joke, but I think it's just a joke. It just when, when I, I hope we meet before Mashiach comes. Yes, hopefully, hopefully before, you know, I mean, I would like to see when Mashiach comes too, you know, but uh, yeah, listen, it would be so nice to see just, you before. Just sooner than, than this. Okay. Anyway, thank you everyone. And we shall see you next week, 8 p.m. on Thursday night. And uh, Alexander Prinsky will be speaking and playing music from Leonard Bernstein. Have a good night. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.